This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this sports team logo using Inkscape and in this particular tutorial the example I'll be using is hockey as you can see here and the font I'll be using for this tutorial is called Yukari Mobile so I'll have a link to that in the description if you don't already have that font installed go ahead and install that font before opening up Inkscape and then we'll be good to go and at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using so we'll minimize this and we'll get to work here the first thing we'll do in Inkscape is set the view to custom make sure that's set to custom and then we'll zoom in at hundred percent then we'll open up our align and distribute menu with this button right here make sure you have last selected chosen from that drop down and then we'll open up our edit objects colors gradients and stroke menu so uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write out our text. So we're going to grab the text tool over here on the left and just click on the canvas. And I'm just going to write hockey just for this tutorial. And we'll go to our text editor up here and we'll find that font that we installed, Yukari Mobile. Hit apply, and close out of that. And then we can go to our select tool up top here. And I'm going to hold Control and Shift on the keyboard and click and drag one of these corner arrows to scale this thing up. And what I'm going to do is, with this is I'm going to take the opacity and drop this down about in half. And then I'm going to change this from a text object to a vector path because as you can see here now, Inkscape is recognizing this as a text object. You see the little cursor blinking up there. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to convert this to a path by going to Path, Object to Path and then ungroup it with this button right here and it's going to ungroup those letters into individual little paths which will allow us to uh, manipulate it further and, and apply different effects and then I'll go to path union with all of those selected path union and it's going to combine that into one object and what I'm going to do with this wording is I'm going to tilt this a little bit I'm going to click this a second time to get the rotation handles and I'm going to grab this side handle over here on the right and just click and drag that up a little bit to give that a little bit of a tilt maybe about that much and then click off of the graphic to deselect it and now I'm going to give this a little bit of perspective to make it look like it's bigger over here and gets smaller towards the end of the word and we're going to do that by grabbing the bezier pen or you can just click B on the keyboard just press B on the keyboard to get that and I'm going to start this box that I'm going to draw down here I'm going to click down here and I'm going to bring this line up to about here and then click and then I'm going to bring this line over to the right, maybe about here, at about where the E is. And then click. And I'll bring this down to the right a little bit to about here. And click. And then I'll connect it back to the starting point. Just like that. And let's go back to the select tool and let's pull this thing out of the way. I'll put it down here. And with this selected, I'm going to select this first and then hold shift and click on that box. And go to extension. Modify path, perspective. And it took the word and gave it a little bit of perspective. And I'm just going to take this arrow and pull this, bring this in a little bit. I don't quite like how wide the letters were. Maybe we'll do something like that. That's pretty good. And we'll take this box, click on that, and just press delete on the keyboard. We're done with that. And let's take this and bring the opacity of that all the way up. And let's make this white. And then we'll right click that and go to duplicate and we'll make that duplicated copy almost black. It's the next one over from black. It's a very, very dark gray, 90% gray. We'll click on that and we'll lower that beneath the white copy by pressing this button up here that says lower selection one step. And then we're going to give that a black outline by holding shift in the keyboard and clicking on that same color, that 90% gray. And it's going to put a little bit of an outline. And we want that outline to be a lot bigger. So let's come over to the stroke style tab and let's try out um, a 12 point stroke hit 12 hit enter uh, we want that a little bigger than that maybe 15 we still want that bigger let's try 25 okay what we want we want this thing to be so thick enough so that it closes in all these gaps in the middle here previously when it was at 10 you see there's a lot of gaps between the letters and this gap right here and between the legs of the H we don't want that we want that to be closed in and even with 15 it fills in a lot of this but you still got this right here so you take that up to 25 and there you have it and you can see right here there's a little bit of a glitch right here this corner got knocked out so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this a rounded cap and see if that does it yeah that works pretty well you just give that a rounded cap and that should fix that problem 
And then I'm gonna duplicate that. We'll go to edit, duplicate. And I'm gonna come down here to the color picker and give that a nice shade of blue or whatever color you'd like. I'm gonna give that, make that blue. Uh, let's come over to the fill tab and uh, we'll come over to the fill tab and under the HSL tab, whatever RGBA that is, we're gonna click and drag over that. Right click and go to uh, copy. And we'll go to the stroke paint tab and we'll give the outline or otherwise known as the stroke that same shade. So we'll erase that and paste that in there, control V. And then we can lower this to the bottom. And we're gonna have to make this stroke even bigger. So let's try 35 and see how that looks. Uh, I'll go a little bigger than that. Let's try maybe 40. Now, you know what I think? I think 35 looks better. Yeah, like that, that's pretty good. And once we've done that, let's click on this white, the white word that says hockey, and let's come, come back to the color picker, and we'll give that a shade of gray, maybe 20% gray. And then I'm gonna right click this and dupe, go to duplicate, and then grab the Bezier pen over here, or you could just press B on the keyboard. And I'm gonna start this line on the outside here and click out here and bring that line straight through the center of the word right there, like that. Click and then just finish this line up going around the outside of the graphic. Snap it back to the starting point. Then we can go to our select tool and I'm gonna hold shift in the keyboard and click on the gray hockey word and go to path intersection and then turn that white and then you'll see what that did. It gave it, came, it gave it sort of kind of like a little bit of a reflection. So let me press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. Let's click and drag over all of this and group it together and put this off to the side for now. Now we're gonna go ahead and create an oval. So let's click off of that to deselect it. And we'll come over to our circles and ellipses tool and click on that. And I'm just gonna click and drag to create an oval, maybe about that size. And uh, let's make this that same shade of dark gray that we used before, the 90% gray. And let's get rid of that blue outline by holding shift and clicking on the X. And we'll go back to the select tool. And the width and height of this, let's say that's pretty good like that, about 436 by 233, somewhere in that range. You can go 430 by 230 or even 400 by 200. That's, that's pretty good. And I'm gonna right click that and go to duplicate. And I'm gonna turn that blue I mean red, and take the opacity of that and drop that down about in half. And I'm gonna hold Control and Shift and scale this in about that much. And then I'm going to right click that and go to Duplicate. And I'll turn that blue. And then I'll right click and duplicate again and turn that green. And then I'm gonna hold Control on the keyboard and click and drag, click and drag this bottom left arrow out to about here. And then I'll hold control and grab this top arrow and scale that out to about there. I'm actually just gonna scale this back in a little bit. We're looking at the blue shape underneath the green shape here. This, the, the, uh, the blue shape that's sticking out, that's gonna be the shape that we create. So we want this thing to be not so long that it goes around the entire oval. We don't want it like that. You see the blue is going all the way around. We wanna leave this thing relatively small. I'd say like that should be pretty good. And then we could hold shift in the keyboard and click on that blue shape and go to path, difference. And then I'm gonna right click that blue shape, go to duplicate, and I'll flip that vertically and horizontally and hold shift in the keyboard and click on this red shape. And I'm going to align the top edges and then align the right edges. And it's gonna put it there like that. So what we could do now is click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Let's click on this red oval and press delete on the keyboard. We're done with that. And then let's click on this blue shape and then hold shift and click on that other blue shape and bring the opacity all the way up. And I'm gonna press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. And I'm gonna, we're gonna make these blue shapes the same shade of blue that this outline is. So let's zoom in over this right here. I'm just gonna hold control and roll upwards on the mouse wheel. And we're gonna grab our dropper tool. If you don't see this icon on your screen, just press F7 on the keyboard to get the dropper tool. I'm just gonna click and drag a little circle on there to make that the same shade. And then we can press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. We go back to our select tool. And then I'm just gonna pan the page over. You could press down on the mouse wheel and move the mouse around to pan the page around. And there we have our two shapes. So let's click off of it to deselect everything and click on just this one blue shape right here. And then we'll right click that and go to duplicate. I'm gonna turn that white and I'm gonna go to path inset and that's gonna make that a little smaller as you can see here and I'm gonna do that again actually path inset and that's pretty good 
And I'll take this and I'm just going to put this right here by this blue shape. And I'm going to click that a second time to get the rotation handles. And I'm just going to rotate this around a little bit, maybe about that much. And we want these points to be near each other. We don't want them connecting to each other like that. We want them to be near each other like that. We want the white and the blue shapes to be closer at these points and further away at these points. And once you have it set up like that, we can right click on that and go to duplicate and we'll flip this vertically and horizontally. And then we'll just go ahead and put this one up here sort of to like uh, emulate what we did with the one on the bottom. And we can click off that to deselect everything. I'm gonna press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. And then I'm gonna click and drag over this entire thing. And I'm going to group it together and I'm gonna click it a second time to get the rotation handles. And I'm gonna hold control and grab one of these corner arrows and just click and drag this up one step so it's a little tilted like that. And then I'm gonna take this and bring this over to our word over here. And I'm gonna lower that beneath the word by pressing this button, lower selection to the bottom. We'll put this over here and we can just pretty much arrange how this should be positioned. I'm actually gonna hold control and shift and scale this in a little bit to make this a little smaller. We want to make sure that these two points right here are visible. We don't want them hiding beneath the, beneath the word because we're going to use these two points as a place to put the puck that we're, we're going to draw next. So, um, you know what? That's, uh, okay, that's pretty good like that. So let's click off of that to deselect everything. And then let's draw a little hockey puck. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, grab our Create Circles and Ellipses tool, and we're just going to click and drag to create an oval. Uh, let's turn this red and bring the opacity down about in half. And we'll go back to our Select tool. I'm going to make this thing about this wide and this high. It's about 450 by 145. That's a pretty, you can go 450 by 150. That's a pretty good shape and size. So once we do that, um, I'm going to right click this and go to Duplicate. And I'll turn this green. And I'll hold control on the keyboard and just click and drag this copy down to about here. And then I'll grab the Bezier pen, click on the tool, or you could just press B on the keyboard to get the Bezier pen. And we're going to turn on our snap to paths up here. And I'm going to snap the cursor onto the far left edge of this green uh, oval and click. And then hold control on the keyboard and bring that line straight up until it snaps onto the edge of the red shape. And then click. And while still holding control, bring that line all the way to the right and click. Still holding control, bring this line all the way down here until it snaps, and then click. And then we can let go of control and just bring this line back around to the starting point. And then we can go to um, our select tool. And then we could hold shift and click on the green oval and go to path union. So it's all one shape like that. And then I'm going to take this red object and I'm going to right click that and go to duplicate and hold shift in the keyboard and click on the green shape and go to path difference. And then I'm going to take this red oval. I'm going to duplicate that again, right click, duplicate. And I'm going to turn this copy blue and hold control and shift in the keyboard and scale this in maybe about that much. And I'm going to take this green shape and I'm going to right click that and go to duplicate. And I'm going to turn that blue. And I'm going to give this an inset as well. I'm going to go to Path, Inset. And it's going to make it a little smaller. I'm actually going to do that a few more times to make it a little smaller. But instead of clicking on the menu over and over, we can use the keyboard shortcut, which you can see here is Control and the parentheses sign. But Control 9 works. So I'm just going to do Control 9, 1, 2, and maybe one more time, a third time. And that's, I'd say that's pretty good. And then we could. Um, right click on that and go to duplicate and turn that red and let's come up here and turn off our snap to paths and turn on our snap to cusp nodes and with this red object selected I'm gonna click it a second time to get the rotation handles and when we do that a little crosshair is going to appear in the middle and what I'm gonna do with that crosshair I'm just gonna take and click and drag that onto that corner right there until it snaps. And what that crosshair is, that's the axis on which the object will rotate. So if that crosshair is in the center and I rotate this around, it's gonna rotate relative to the center. Now if I take this crosshair and put it at the corner, it's gonna rotate relative to where the corner there, where the, where the crosshair is. So once that's in the corner, I'm just gonna take this, bo this bottom left rotation handle and ro uh, 
rotate this down a little bit, about that much. And then I'm gonna click this again to get back to the scaling handles. And I'm gonna hold control and I'm just gonna click and drag this arrow until it scales out a little bit, until this red corner exceeds the blue shape. So before I did that, you could see this, the red corner is within that shape. We don't want that. We want this thing to be outside of that shape like that. And once you get there, uh, hold shift in the keyboard and click on that blue shape and go to path difference. And you can see what that did. We created that little shape right there. And then I'm going to right click this and go to duplicate and hold control on the keyboard and just click and drag this down to about here. And then I'll right click that and duplicate it again. Hold control, bring that down to about there. And then hold shift and click on those other two blue shapes. So we have all three of these uh, little blue crescent shapes selected. And we're going to space them out evenly by going to the, the uh, distribute panel and the button that says make vertical gaps between objects equal. You can go ahead and click on that and then go to path union. And then I'm going to hold shift in the keyboard and click on the green shape and make sure that is centered on the horizontal axis. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And we'll click on the red oval and then hold shift and click on the green shape and go to path union. And then we can click on this blue shape and then hold shift and click on that blue shape. So we have them both selected and go to path union. And I'm going to bring the opacity all the way up. I'm going to make that white. And then I'm going to click on this red shape right here. I'm going to bring the opacity all the way up. And I'm going to make that the same shade of dark gray that we've been using the entire time, the 90% gray. And then I'm going to go to path linked offset. And I'm going to make that offset copy the same color of blue that we used over here. So what we're going to do is press F7 on the keyboard to get the dropper. And then just go ahead and click on a blue portion right there to make that the same shape. And then we can go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And we'll see this little node right here. We can just take this and pull this out. I'm going to pull that out about that much. And then go to Path, Object to Path. And that'll finalize it at that size. So once we've done that, we can go back to the Select tool. Let's turn off our Snap to Cusp nodes. And let's click and drag over the entire Puck graphic that we just created and group that together. And I'm going to hold Control and Shift in the keyboard and just click and drag to scale this in. Scale that down about that much. Let's come back over here and put this on our graphic. I'm just going to hold Control and scale this down a little more. Still a little too big. And then I'm going to click this a second time to get the rotation handles. And I'm going to hold Control on the keyboard and just click and drag this around until it looks like it's going in the direction that these lines are going. We want it to make it look like this puck is being sent out by these lines right here. And I'm actually going to make this a little smaller. It's still a little too big. And I'd say that right there is pretty, pretty good. Maybe I'll bring this down a little bit. You know what? Maybe I'll make that bigger again. Yeah, like that. That's pretty good. And basically what I was trying to do is make this blue area stick out from the black area right there. So just to give it a little bit of shape to the overall design. And let's press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. Uh, we're almost done. We have one more step, and that would be to tie this entire design together by giving the entire thing an outline. So let's click on their our little word right here, and let's ungroup that, and then click off of the graphic to deselect everything, and let's click on this blue shape right there, and we're gonna we're gonna duplicate that by going to edit, duplicate. You don't want to right click that because it's not going to right click on that shape. It's going to right click on one of these objects that are layered above it. We'll go to edit, duplicate, and um, I'm going to make this white and then I'm going to hold shift in the keyboard and click on the white key to make that outline white. And what I'm going to do next, I actually skipped this step. Let's click off of that to deselect everything and let's grab our, our rectangles tool. We're going to want to put a backdrop behind this entire graphic so we can see how the white outline appears while we're creating it. So let's just click and drag and create a rectangle. And let's make this, um, let's just make this red for now. And let's get rid of that white outline by holding shift and clicking on the X. And we go back to our select tool and we could send that to the bottom with this button right here. And then let's take this white wording and we're going to have to make the outline a little bigger in order for it to appear behind the entire graphic. So let's go to the stroke style tab and let's make this a, a little bit bigger than whatever, whatever number you have there. 
add about five or 10 to it and see how it looks. So I'm gonna write in 40 and hit enter. And then I'm gonna take this and send this to the bottom with this button right here. And then I'm gonna raise it one step with this button right here. Raise that one step so it's up behind, uh, it's, it's above the red backdrop. And as you can see here, the outline's a little thin. I want it uh, a little thicker than that. So let's try 45 and see how that looks. All right, that's pretty good. We could leave that how it is. And then let's click on this oval graphic here in the middle right here. And let's ungroup that. You just click the ungroup button. And then click uh, then click off of it to deselect everything. And then we can click on our puck graphic and ungroup that as well with this button. Click off of that to deselect everything. And let's click just this black oval right here in the background. We'll right click that and go to duplicate. And we're going to turn that green for now just so we can see it. And let's zoom in on this right here. I'm just going to hold control and roll up on the mouse wheel to zoom in. We're going to grab this blue shape. We're going to right click that and go to duplicate. And press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out. And then we're going to hold shift and click on that green oval and unify it together by going to path union. And I'm going to turn that white. And I'm going to give this a white outline as well by holding shift and clicking on the color white. And the stroke style, uh, let me start out with about 20. And then we'll send this to the back, lower selection to the bottom, and then raise it one step so it's above the, uh, the red backdrop. And that we want this, this white outline to be consistent with the other white outline we used. And we can see here it's a little too thick. So let me try, let me try 15 and see how that looks. All right, I'd say that's pretty good. Then we can press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out. It looks like we already are. And then we can take this backdrop and we can turn this black or gray or whatever you want. And that's pretty much it. We have finished our logo. We can click and drag over the entire thing and group it together with this button right here. And as you can see, we finished our, we finished our hockey logo. I'm going to right click that and go to duplicate and put this over here to see that you can't see the white outline on the um, on a white background so that's why I like to put it on a darker background so you can see that white line white outline so that's pretty much how you could do that in Inkscape if you have any questions let me know otherwise uh, thank you again for watching